I included in the description below the timeline is the different segments of the, about this uh, tool that you're about to watch the review on. It's a long video by my standards, so if you go down below, maybe pick out just the segment you want to see about this tool if you have any questions. And uh, hey, as long as I have this tool and I'm working with it, I will answer any questions I can. However, uh, some of the questions you may have would be answered in the link below to Eric O's channel, South Main Auto. He is a uh, master technician, I call him, but he uses this tool, among others, uh, frequently. And uh, if you want to check out that video and more on his channel. Also, Keith at New Level Auto, uh, I contacted him. And while he doesn't use this tool, he doesn't own one, which is highly unusual because the guy's got a lot of tools, he does recommend it um, among having other scanners if you're a professional. So anyway, I'll get out of here so you can watch the video. I hope you enjoy it. Well guys, no one scanner can do all the work. Uh, I have found out over the years of playing with this hobby that uh, you know I could buy one scanner and I'd be happy with it. I found that not to be the case. Uh, I have bought and been sent scanners over the last year or so for review and have done some research on my own. And uh, like Keith said at uh, New Level Auto, if someone asks him what kind of scanner to buy, he just says yes. And what he's getting at is no one scanner can do all the work. So if you're a professional, for sure, you're going to need more than one scanner. Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Today's uh, video, I'm excited to bring you because I actually paid for this one. This is the Maxisys 906, the Bluetooth edition. The first thing I noticed, just kind of playing around with the uh, 808 that I did a video on, that this... Uh, VCI doesn't have a holding pad in the back like the 808 does, but it makes sense because the uh, 906 has a camera and a flash in that place, so just don't lose this. Eric uses this most every day if he's doing diagnostic work, and uh, he's going to give me a link to one of the, the videos he has produced. I'll put that in the description below so you can go check out his video. And actually see a master using this tool. So uh, let's get to it. First thing I want to do is check under updates because now that I have Wi-Fi and I'm registered, updates are supposed to be uh, automatic and it looks like a one is. So let's download this one. One thing I was interested in because I have a Chrysler product and that is that uh, this tool can reset the tipping which is totally integrated power module. And uh, that's what Chrysler uses to uh, control distribution of power to the vehicle. Like another YouTube uh, review indicated, it would be nice if these were in alphabetical order, but you can come up to the top here and hit USA, for example. Now you have the cars here in the States that are available on this tool. From this menu, we have two choices. We'll start with diagnostics, auto scan. And it's going to run through a pretty lengthy list, so I'll shut you off for a minute. All right, the system is complete. I do expect this one fault under powertrain because it is going to be the mass airflow. Trouble codes, read codes, engine. And there it is, P0101, and gives you a short description. And from that screen, I hit search, and it brings you right to Google. And in this case, we have, it uh, looks like a video that might help you in your troubleshooting. picked the fuel. So fuel was a good one for me because it does include uh, the mass airflow sensor. So here we have some data. Of course the truck's not running right now. So here's the joy of having Bluetooth. This says it'll work up to 164 feet away. There's my truck out there running. Pretty loud, right? Sorry for all the movement. Now we can look at the data together in relatively peace and quiet. 
It's a warm day today, 29 degrees, it's middle of October. So this is of interest to me because of the uh, trouble code for the mass airflow. What I don't know, of course, is what these readings are supposed to be. So you can see every time I change the value here, this value also increases. So the computer's doing its job. So under selecting, under the active test, I select a glow plug test. We have on or off. Watch this value here. We see it on. I don't want to leave it on because it's running. But we now know the computer has control of the glow plug. Two thousand six Dodge truck with the Hemi engine in it, and uh, the driver is complaint is uh, multiple things actually. Yeah. <laughs> it won't start unless he rocks the truck sometimes, and uh, it does have some. Uh, at times, there's rough running cylinders dropping out, so we're going to see if we got a misfire count, and we can also get into the transmission with this tool and see if there's. Uh, anything we can read there. So we're going to let this read all the uh, data here. I'll bring you back. So this is what we got. And the driver, he, the owner of the truck, he knows he's got issues. It's a work truck. He just wants to keep it running. So we're not going to worry about things like the uh, uh, occupant restraint and that kind of thing. Unless we find a bad ground, of course. I'll have to look up what central gateway means. But the main thing is the power uh, powertrain control module. I hope you all can see that. All right, so looking at the codes, um, like we said, he got multiple problems that he knows about reflection. I can't get the screen out of any kind of reflection here. But what we're doing is, since he's had some misfires in the past, uh, if you can hear the truck, for example, I'm going to hit the fuel injector three here, and you can hear it missing. So we're doing that on all his injectors. <laughs> we're just we're doing that to check his injectors. And I'm sorry about this glare; I cannot get rid of it. I thought I'd take advantage of the downloading. I just turned this on and 43 downloads became available. <clears throat> of course, I'm going to select the ones I think I'll need. Uh, forward here, for example, you can read what it's updating. I just thought that was kind of cool. And then GM, there's what it's updating. One of the things I was hoping to show you is now that we worked on that 06 Dodge a little, I want to come into uh, vehicle history and see if it's there. And sure enough, in fact, my old truck is there as well. So now what we can do with that, since he's going to bring his truck back for some more work, is uh, I can fill this in. And you do have to uh, do some work on the software here to get it ready to print, but it does have printing capabilities. So I'm going to work on this and give him a, a uh, rundown. It's Looks like it kept most of the codes that we were looking under so that's kind of neat to have those for reference and the way you fill this in is uh, hit this icon up here and then it brings your cursor down workshop information again you can add with the plus sign you can add uh, different uh, information if you wanted to uh, generate a receipt if you get an unfamiliar car in your shop you go to function viewer This is the tool we're using, the 906BT, and I'm going to enter, or I'm going to, if I can hit it right, bring this down, find Dodge in this case, it's the 05 Magnum. Alright, there's the 300 Magnum, it's an 05. And here are the functions that this tool will uh, do for you. So in this case, pretty well covered. All right, now we're connected to the 05 Dodge Magnum, my wife's car. Looks like my car. I don't know of any uh, faults on this car, but we might be surprised together. And I am a bit surprised, not by the airbag so much. I just had a recall on this Dodge completed it is the passenger side airbag so it looks like they well I know they did the work but it looks like they may have uh, not cleared the fault or 
the car takes multiple drive cycles for it to clear but since we have this here I may just clear it myself the radio fault that's new to me again that might have something to do with their work I'm not sure of that and the TPMS wireless control this car doesn't have TPMS so I'm not sure what that's all about and that's it so in this case I am going to quick erase and what that does is erase all the faults that are showing what I'm going to do now is start the car go back to live data there's some other things I want to show you there alright this car is not as loud as the truck maybe I can stay here and you can hear me what I want to show you live data are these little down arrow keys they'll bring up these uh, options here that you can grasp so I'm showing 14.2 or 3 we can bring it up to graph mode I like graph mode because it's the only mode that you can go to full page in and back key to get out of it um, <clears throat> Let's get something a little more interesting for your viewing pleasure. Alright, that's kind of interesting. What I selected was system voltage, again hitting the down arrow. And I use the analog or the gauge. Under special function, they give you a few options here. You can read that for yourself. I'm not going to touch anything because <laughs> I don't know enough about it to tell you the truth. I don't want to mess anything up. But you can see if you replace the PCM, for example, I'm sure that's a an area you would go to to, to uh, reprogram the new PCM. Alright, if you back out and see this page, you can go back into a control unit and then let's go to entertainment since I did have that radio fault. And I'm going to hit live data. You and I are seeing this both for the first time. So it looks like, as expected, everything to control the radio is here so what I did here is go to the restraint since that was another area we had a fault in and I want to see live data and in a one quick glance you can watch this value here and go through it once the Bluetooth catches up you see nothing in red so that tells me pretty much everything is where it should be and obviously you would if you had a fault you can go into the different areas here that are available and do some troubleshooting. In the end guys, you still gotta do the work, but this is a great tool to send you in that right direction. So I backed out of those icons, found one that was called Gateway, and it has a lot to do with the body functions it looks like. You can see now my right low beam is on, I'm gonna shut off the lights. The value has changed, so again, you can go to uh, this and do a bunch of work on your body components turn signals, fans, parking lamps, reverse lamps it's actually quite cool for a new guy like me I'm pretty impressed again there will be some functions that are not supported like this I don't have a steering control steering, steering column module actually I could check. I don't think I do though. This is an older car. It does have some sub chapters here. We can go into live data. I'm kind of surprised it has anything. Oh, okay, it's back. Oh, okay. It's the. It's not so much the steering wheel angle as it is everything on the steering wheel controls. So that makes more. More. Uh, more sense. Right turn signal. Let's do that one. And it's pressed. Uh, turn it off and go to the left. All right, very cool. There's a stern angle. Holy crap! Boy, if you wanted to make sure your steering wheel was straight, that'd be the way to do it. Doesn't take much to move that value. Hope you're enjoying the uh, demonstrations. I'm kind of just running through different things to see if something might help you make a decision on this tool, but I've got limited cars to use. So there you have it. My best attempt to introduce the uh, MS906 to you. Uh, I've had a lot of fun using it so far, and uh, I've got a lot of good recommendations from people who use it every day. Um, the video was kind of all over the place, but I tried to edit it down as short as I could get it, but still show you uh, some of the main functions and options that tool offers. So I uh, appreciate each and every one of you. I've gotten a lot of new subscribers lately. Welcome aboard. Uh, got some more videos coming out, more nuts and bolts uh, 
type videos. I'm done with scanners for a while. But uh, again, thanks a lot, guys. So we'll see you in the next video.